complexity. What did he look like? Hmm. This is a difficult one. Although everybody here would think, wow, we have, we've all seen pictures of Leonardo, self-portraits and all that. You know, it's, it's not clear because there's so many different portraits of him. Which one was he? So we have one here, a pupil of Leonardo, that sketches him, right? 1550. So this is, Leonardo died in 1519, so this was sketched roughly around 30 years after his death, perhaps as the, as the apprentice was thinking back over his life, his master, perhaps he was fixing up the figure. But what's interesting about this figure is that he looks, doesn't look really that old. Born in 1452 and dies in 1519, he's 67. A 67 year old man can carry himself quite well. And if you notice here, look at his forehead, it's actually quite clear here, and then there's this mustache right here, right? And he has that, and then the hair, the long flowing hair. They all seem to have that in common, and, and, and this Roman nose here, or the aquiline nose with the long flowing hair. And we have Francesco Bartolozzi, who's probably derived his picture from this one. You can see that's 1795, that's 200 years later, 250 years almost, and then you have this one. So if you look at these two, they're very similar. Right? Then you have Ambrogio Figino in 1590, who draws him as a much older looking man. Interesting, notice the creases on his forehead. Right? He's a much older man. So these are all portraits. Then you have Raphael. Raphael Osanzio is, of course, one of the big three artists in Italy during the Renaissance. The Renaissance means anything to anybody. It's because there were three artists at the time who made major contributions to painting and art in general. And there were Raphael Osanzio, known as Raphael, Leonardo da Vinci, known as Leonardo, and Michelangelo Bonarroti, known as Michelangelo. And the three together essentially made things happen. A lot of competition between them. That's interesting. In fact, the fact that uh, Raphael got his commission to do the, the stanze, which is the rooms of the Pope in the Vatican, was uh, an irritation for Michelangelo. He thought he should have, Leonardo didn't carry the way. He kind of remembers something about Leonardo. He's a bit of an apolitical person. All he wants to do is learn. That's all he wanted to do. You got to remember that. He didn't care how he learned, he had to learn. And dissect bodies, we dissect bodies, we don't know what's happening inside. You've got to do what it takes to learn. This was essentially at the root of the Renaissance. The Renaissance means a rebirth. Rebirth of what? Of knowledge, of many things, of society, of painting, of art, of thinking. Right? Of thinking it was a rebirth of that. So here, Raphael, this is called a school of Athens. He, uh, he has Leonardo painted right here. I'll show you a close up in a second. In the the School of Athens, dated 1510. So this is nine years before Leonardo dies. Bramante was one of the great people uh, in, in the Vatican at the time. He was an architect. He did all sorts of stuff. Michelangelo is over here. Notice he's holding his head. See, like, what am I doing? But Raphael put him there, sort of brooding, which is what, one thing we know that Michelangelo did a lot. He's brooding. He was never really happy about anything either. But, but these people were driven. And that's really quite fascinating. So here, Leonardo makes his entrance. And Raphael painted this from 1483 to 1520. Uh, actually, no, sorry. He was born in 1483 and died in 1520. So that's one year after uh, Leonardo. So the Renaissance lost two major masters in one year. And Raphael died in tuberculosis, we think. Now, you go into this picture, and here's the close up. Leonardo. And here is what we think Leonardo made a self-portrait. Now, this self-portrait on the left on the left has been attributed to Leonardo. However, nowadays there's huge discussion about whether this is really Leonardo. What we do know, however, is that Raphael did not make mistakes. Raphael knew Leonardo. Raphael could paint, right? Raphael could draw like nobody could. So this is most likely what he looked like. Do you see a slight difference between these two pictures? Ah, the mustache. Would you leave that out if you're Raphael? Ah, if he didn't have a mustache, he wouldn't put it in. He does have a mustache. And that, in fact, is very interesting because we noticed earlier one of his students made him with a mustache also. 
roughly the same time. So who is this man who doesn't have a mustache and who in fact looks much older than 67? Looks like in his 80s or 90s. Conjecture. They think it's either his father or his uncle because he was raised by his uncle, partly, and partly by his father. So he's remembering it in his old age. So this we now think is in fact not Leonardo. It is not a self-portrait. And it's most likely either his uncle or his father. And this is, in fact, what he probably looked like. That was his characteristic finger pointing over there. You know, listen to me, look at heaven, whatever. So uh, is there an authentic Leonardo portrait? It's not clear. We did find out. Now, I'll get into the math eventually, right? I'm just trying to get you to know a little bit about Leonardo in a way that very few people know. So um, in 2007, and this is, uh, you can find the reference of Leonardo 3.net um, in March. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in March, Piero Angela, a national broadcast in Italy, says that they discovered a hidden figure in one of his manuscripts. This hidden figure is a figure of what they believe is a self portrait of Leonardo in the Flight of Birds. Right? The Flight of Birds is the manuscript. You can see here the writing from right to left, left handed. I should talk about it. And you can see this nose sticking out from behind, right? So we clearly painted or he sketched over something they already done. When they actually do some retouching and remove the ink and all that, you realize that you see this figure. The eyes are sort of behind the writing here. So you get this. If you look at the nose, the nose looks like Leonardo's nose. I mean, it's typical. The nose is this protrusion. That's fascinating. Now, why did he write from right to left? So, he was about one. He was dyslexic. Now, if he had a daughter that's been dyslexic, I had a daughter that was dyslexic when she was young. When I taught her how to write uh, from in the traditional way, she would write from right to left, mirror image. So she saw my handwriting, and she automatically wrote it from right to left, mirror image. I was amazed. I thought, wait a minute. You're writing like Leonardo. <laughs> she was three. I mean, she couldn't have known. She couldn't have known, right? There's no way she could have known. So I thought maybe this is a part of dyslexia. Perhaps he was dyslexic, right? And until you actually had a kid that does this, you can't believe that this is really happening. But it happened. Second possibility, this man was very excited about everything. So when you're excited about stuff, you have to write quickly. Now, you're 500 years ago, you can't write quickly. You don't have a terminal, you have a typewriter, you have nothing. All you have are these crazy quills with ink that takes forever to dry. And stylus as well. Made out of lead, which is a very good problem. <laughs> because we don't know that lead is very dangerous. But in those days, they used lead every day for all sorts of things. And um, if, you, if you dipped your quill into, into gall ink, like the black gall ink, various insects and all sorts of things that we stuck together with this black ink. It would take a while for it to dry. When you write from right to left, you can look at the first part of your line and then realize, oh, okay, you know, I mean, I'm going to be back there in about a minute after I finish writing and dipping, writing and dipping. So by the time I get there, it'll have dried. But if you're left-handed, which now we're sure he was left-handed, by the way that the brush strokes were made on the paintings, it could have been made only by a left-handed person, so that's been studied, it was left-handed. If you're left-handed and you try and write from right to left, what happens? Yeah, you write over what you've already written, because your hand touches the ink, and that ink doesn't dry. So you've got a problem. So you tell yourself, you're Leonardo, and you tell yourself, well, maybe I should start writing from right to left. And if I write from right to left, though, I can't write the normal way. But what if I write mirror image? So he teaches himself that, so that he can write essentially what he wants to write, from right to left, and in mirror image. At the same time, what does it do? It allows him to write all his thoughts quickly. It also conceals stuff. But I mean, anybody at the time would have realized that you're writing from right to left in mirror image, so they could have put a thing on the mirror and realized that. Oh.